This episode of the Audacity Channel podcast is wrapping up some loose ends from the last episode and from some recent questions that I was asked concerning Audacity. So stick around. Hello, friends. Mikey Adams here with the Audacity Channel podcast. When I installed version 3.2.3 of Audacity, some of my real-time effects went missing. Has that happened to you? The real-time stackable effects that previously showed up when I would try to add an effect were not there. And that was a bit perplexing because I had been using those and all of a sudden they were gone. Again, this happened when I installed version 3.2.3. So I wanted to let you know, in case you're not aware, that you can rescan for your plugins. If you're missing some real-time plugins, when you upgrade, you can rescan your plugins. You can force a manual rescan in Audacity and it will go out and read those plugins again. Normally, when Audacity starts, it scans all of your plugins. But for some reason, a bunch of mine were missing. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So first up in this episode, I want to talk to you about how to force a manual rescan of your plugins. You can go to the Effect drop-down menu or the Analyze menu and select Plugin Manager. I believe in earlier versions of Audacity, it was called Add Remove Plugins, but now it's called Plugin Manager. And once you click on that, you'll see a familiar screen. This is the screen where you can enable or disable plugins. And while we're talking about this window, let me just mention that if you have a real-time plugin, a VS2 or a VS3 plugin, which Audacity now supports in version 3.2.3, and you don't have it enabled in this window, it's not going to show up when you go to add an effect as a real-time effect. So just be aware of that. That isn't what happened in my case, but that's important to know. You still have to enable VST2 and VST3 plugins here for them to show up as real-time plugins when you're adding real-time effects. But in addition to that, once you've got this Manage Plugin window open, you'll see near the bottom left a Rescan button. And you can click that Rescan button to force a rescan of your plugins. And that will force Audacity to go out and look at all of your plugins again and rebuild them for you so that they're available as real-time plugins once again. So I don't know why those disappeared on me when I upgraded to 3.2.3, but it was real easy to get them back just by clicking the rescan button, and I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Another thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is that in a future version of Audacity, we're going to have the ability to save our effect chains. In other words, as I build a chain of effects on a track, I'll be able to save that chain for reuse on other tracks. Now that isn't there yet, but it's coming in a future version of Audacity. I have a screenshot of what's been proposed, and if I can, I'll see if I can attach it to the description of this podcast episode so that you can take a look at it for yourself. And it might change a little bit, but it is on the way, which is going to be a real time saver because even though we can save presets on our real time effects, Adding them back in into the same order over and over again gets pretty time consuming. This way, once we've saved a chain, we can just reapply the chain to any track that we want along with the presets. And that's going to be a real time saver. Again, it's not there yet, but it's on its way. Next, I want to follow up a little bit with what was in my last episode where I talked about the grouping of effects in the drop down menu. I had mentioned in that episode that when I installed 3.2.3, my effects were grouped differently. I used to have my effects listed in alphabetical order in the effects drop-down menu, but when I installed 3.2.3, they were suddenly grouped, and I hadn't changed anything. Now, in case you're not aware, you can go into your Preferences window and select Effects, and you can check the kind of effects that you want to have appear in your effects drop-down menu. And you can even filter how you want to see those. But something new that was added in 3.2.3 was a setting called Default. And I have since verified that in earlier versions, as early as 3.2.2, there was no default setting. There was no default option in that drop-down window in Preferences. But there is now. And when I installed 3.2.3, it defaulted to the default. And the default is to group that effect drop down menu or that effect drop down window so that it's much smaller and it groups the effects by type. So, in other words, I have a volume and compression category, I have a fading category, I have a pitch and tempo category, EQ and filters, 
noise removal and repair, delay and reverb, and on and on and on. All of my effects are there, but they're just not listed alphabetically like they were before. Instead, they've been put into these categories, into these groups, which actually cleans it up quite a bit, so I'm leaving mine like it is. But I wanted to circle back around and talk about that a bit because I did verify that in 3.2.2, that default setting was not there. That was added in 3.2.3, apparently, which is good to know because there for a while, I thought maybe I was going nuts and I was losing it just a little bit. But it turns out I'm okay. And in talking to others about this, some people have experienced that and some have not. Some who've upgraded to version 3.2.3 still have their effect drop-down window looking exactly as it did before. Others have it changed to this new look, so be aware of that. If you install 3.2.3, your effect drop-down menu might look a little bit different, even though everything's still there. I was asked the question recently about Quick Play. Remember Quick Play? Quick Play is where you can click once up in the time bar in Audacity, and the playhead will immediately go there and start playing. In older versions of Audacity, you could disable that. You could right-click on the playhead, or you could right-click in the time bar and disable Quick Play. That allowed you to click anywhere in the time bar, and the playhead would just be placed there. But that's been changed as well. You can still do that, but you just can't click in the time bar. You can also no longer right-click on the playhead and enable and disable Quick Play there. That option's just not there. And same with the time bar. That option's just not there. It's been removed. However, if you want to place the playhead in a particular location in a track, just click down in the track. That will put the playhead where you want it, but it won't auto-play. So it basically does the same thing. It's just a different way of getting there. So that's about all I have for you in this episode of the Audacity Channel podcast. I want to thank you for joining me. Just a reminder that I do teach Audacity at audacitybootcamp.com. I have two courses there. I have one for podcasters, which is called Audacity Step-by-Step, Beginner to Advanced. And I have another one for ACX Audiobook Narrators that's called ACX Audiobook Production Using Audacity. Both of these courses are comprehensive in their scope and will give you the confidence and skill that you need to record spoken word content using Audacity. And right now, until January 15th, there's a 40% off code of the already very low price of the course where you can jump in at 40% off that already low price. I'll put those promo codes in the description of this episode so that you have them at your fingertips. And again, that 40% off is only good through January 15th of 2023 in celebration of the official launch of the Audacity Bootcamp Online School and of the recently celebrated holidays. You can also find me online at learnaudacity.com, learnaudacity.com, and there are links there to this podcast, there are links there to my YouTube channel, to my Facebook page and all things Audacity. So I will let you go, and until next time, you all take care.